हेलो टू ऑल अवर कम्युनिटी मेंबर्स वेलकम टू द बाजीराव आई एस अकेडमी टूडे इज थर्ड नवंबर एंड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द डेली हिंदू न्यूज पेपर एनालिसिस सो टुडे वी हैव टू आर्टिकल्स इन डिस्कशन द फर्स्ट आर्टिकल इट इज रिलेटेड टू यूनाइटेड नेशन इन एफिशियंसी यू नो दैट द करेंट सीनेरियो व्हिच इज गोइंग ऑन इन द वर्ल्ड ओवर व्हाट आर द टू सीनेरियोज गोइंग ऑन द रशिया यूक्रेन वॉर द फर्स्ट वन एंड द सेकेंड वन is the israel palestine conflict and in these two scenario in these two disturbing scenario the united nation is showcasing a failure example okay so in today's article we will be elaborating about the united nation about its inefficiency because since its origin from 1945 we have lots of global issues which are going on okay but there is no efficiency of the united nation being reflected okay so we will be, so we will be elaborating on that the second article is related to the biosphere reserve the significance of the biosphere reserve okay so we will be talking about the significance and when we talk about biosphere reserve it is basically the unesco designated site that aims to conserve the biodiversity the environment and promoting sustainable development so we will be trying to explore okay and this is very important article but before that we have a rapid warm up session and in this session we talk about the uh, like prelims previous year paper okay so you have to solve the question please pause the video try to analyze the question and solve it you can comment the answer in the chat box so the question is which of the following ancient towns is well known for its elaborate system of water harvesting and management by building a series of dams and channelizing water into connected reservoir okay so these all are the sites of indus valley civilization and you know and you know about ivc that these uh, cultures these civilizations was at most superior culture okay the first urban culture in indian subcontinent so that's a very important point and here these locations has a significant finding about the ivc okay so here you have to answer which location were known for elaborate system of water harvesting where water was conserved and used for the irrigations okay so that is the point and one more thing i want to tell you that if upsc asks or gives options like dhol vira kalivangan raki gari roper okay so try to explore these options as well because maybe the another questions can be framed from these option as well because among these option only one will be correct but for the coming examination there can be a question framing from these options so this is these are indirect way indirect method to decode the examiner's mind okay and also it will help you to ease your preparation to revise your facts and figures okay so that is the important suggestion and now we are shifting to the article discussion so first article it is related to gs paper 2 and it is related to united nations in efficiency so we are seeing that in the global scenario russia ukraine war or the israel palestine conflict which recently was emerged due to the hamas rocket launch in october 7 okay against israel so after that we are seeing that world is getting disturbed with the images that we are visualizing that we are seeing in the newspaper in the media and all of that so do you know that to solve these type of crisis there is a need to have an international organization that will help to meditate that will help to solve the issue yes we do have an international organization that is united nation but do the united nation is performing in terms of a spirit in letter no why because lack of consensus lack of consensus between the permanent members lack of consensus between the united nation general assembly members okay that's why united nation is known for debate 
and discussion but not for the solution okay so that is the point you should remember and when we talk about united nation permanent member there are only five permanent members you can name the permanent members i am naming some of the few like united nation united states of america like russia like china tell me other two so i have named three important permanent members okay us china and russia but tell me whether their interests are converging whether their national interests are converging not so if there is a non convergence of national interest there is non convergence between these members does the united nation will function well does any solution will emerge from united nation no so that is the point that is the reference which is made in this article okay so any global issue or the crisis if needs to be solved then there is a need to have a convergence among the members and there is a need to have a global public good okay the nation the members wants that the public good should be the prior goal but that is not reflected in the united nation okay and when we talk about the role of united nation since the post cold war cold war was a series of indirect war you can say there was no like uh, defense or the military attack in the nation between the us and the ussr but indirect like uh, making allies okay or doing competition between the nation okay so these all were the example of cold war scenario so here two important players in the cold war the us and the another was ussr okay so even what the united nation remain a bystander everything was occurring in front of united nation but no solution was there okay and here you can see the membership of the united nation and the permanent members okay all of that and when we talk about why this is happening it is all because of the national interest versus international issue when we talk about any international issue like climate change like the war that is going on like the syria conflict iraq conflict afghanistan issue all of that okay the players are being participating but in the name of their national interest okay us has its own national interest the russia has its own national interest the china has its own national interest and these interests are diverging in nature so that means no collaboration that means no solution and it is further aggravated by the bit of power given to these five nations okay and if there is a concern regarding their national interest they can apply the veto power and the resolution will be ended and recently you know that a resolution was proposed by the members of the united nation for the siege fire but what happened ultimately many of the nation abstained from voting many of the nation voted against and many of the nation supported so there is a what there is a situation of divergence not convergence so no solution that is the simple meaning okay and when we talk about further issue if united nation is not working well and if nations are not converging to the global interest that means there is a end of liberal international order the article says that there was not such any liberal international order there was only western liberal order and in western liberal order the western nations promoted their interest not the interest of the globe not the interest of the world okay like when we talk about us entered afghanistan okay and you know the disturbance which occurred in afghanistan and then us made a misadventure in iraq okay and along with the global financial crisis all of these was happening in front of united nation but no united nation sanctions was proposed again these country okay and even if proposed they were vetoed by these permanent members okay so what does it mean it means 
that despite the cold war cold war ended and there was rise of unipolar world where the us was dominated but there was not the cooperation that was needed to make global peace okay and prosperity so multipolarity is there multipolarity in terms of that like we have on the one side us on the one side the groupings of the ussr that means russia actually and then we have the arab countries grouping then we have the non-aligned movement related countries like india okay so we have multipolarity but not multilateralism and for the solution of global issues or the crisis we need multilateralism and in multilateralism there is cooperation okay so that's why the functioning of the united nation is inefficient here okay so if united nation is not providing a solution where do we look for one we are seeing that united nation is like a bystander they are only seeing the issue they are only observing the issue they are trying to pass the resolution but ultimately they are not able to solve the crisis so who will be providing the solution ultimately if there is a lack of reform in the united nation no solution will be provided from the un first of all you need to understand okay like uh, we have taken the example of last friday 128 countries voted for a united nation resolution calling for a humanitarian pause okay but many of the nation voted again many of the nation voted neither against neither favor okay this represents what lack of consensus along with why they have voted in such a way because of the vested interest okay the israeli prime minister has its own interest regarding their political power in israel okay to uh, like uh, have a gain of their population in terms of the vote okay voting power and when we talk about arab states okay they are also not supporting the uh, issue in a greater detail okay because they have their own wasted they want peace deal why peace deal because they want to have a security over their region okay and that's why in any of the peace deal done by various arab countries with israel the palestinian issue was sidelined okay so these are the problems and if this problem persists that means the solution will not come from the united nation okay so when we talk about india's role india has a strong ties with israel with uh, palestine as well so why there is no solution being proposed by india actually so when we talk about india israel ties actually the ties is too much strong okay but india do support the two state solution okay two nation solution it means that uh, the ongoing conflict will be end will be ended if the palestinians uh, got their own rights and israel got their own rights and when we talk about right that means first of all that you should <coughs> demarcate the boundary the land between israel and palestine okay so that is one important thing and when we talk about india's active involvement so india is not actively involving because india has its own interest okay so india will also prioritize its own interest like uh, we have indian diaspora in the west asia okay we have the energy dependency on the west asia so if we try to uh, go deeper into these conflicts okay so there may be chance that uh, the interest of india may get affected and also one important thing you will be observing that uh, uh, like uh, recently our prime minister uh, tweeted when the conflict started and the tweet was indicated like uh, we are against terrorism okay but this was indirectly felt that we are supporting israel but we are not supporting the palestinian cause okay and uh, 
that's why after some days we try to balance it and that's why we are like uh, provided the palestinian uh, for aid okay humanitarian assistance and all of that so that is also one important thing and when we talk about the other issue the other issue is national interest of all stakeholders okay like uh, for the israel the current coalition or the current government of israel consists of extreme right wing party and they want uh, like control over the palestine okay and uh, west bank and when we talk about gulf state there is a little sympathy for the palestinian cause we have already discussed and in the russia ukraine conflict we have the ukrainians who left the country and other european countries such as poland accepted them as a refugee but when the israel palestine conflict rose actually uh, like uh, egypt jordan they share borders okay with israel but when these palestinians were going to egypt for refugee the egypt closed the gate okay they didn't allow the entry of the palestinian as a refugee okay so that means what that means uh, like they are not trying to accept the refugee that means the palestinian interest is subdued here okay and also when we talk about the u.s interest so u.s is also caught up with an election okay so when we talk about india does india can play a role mediatory role okay to solve this crisis so in one simple answer it's no because when we talk about these issue these conflicting issue many superior powers are acting here like us is acting here okay but when we talk about india it has its own stake okay and we are little bit more uh, favorable to israel like we have already talked about some of the recent events in terms of tweet and the humanitarian assistance thereafter to manage the issue to manage the conflict okay so we always uh, maintains our traditional position that is to a state solution for israel and palestine but the game of this conflict is played by much more superior level and that's why india has limitations at its position and limitations of what we can do diplomatically okay and if we try to engage much more there can be a negative effect on let's say arab and india relations okay if you want to favor israel that means there will be a disturbance in relations with arab nations if you want to favor palestine there will be a disturbance in relations with the us or the israel okay and we all have uh, interests associated with these countries so that are a tough situation for india okay that's why india can balance okay india can try to reduce the conflict okay but maybe it cannot play the active role to solve the crisis okay so that is the end of the article hope you understood now we are shifting to the second article and that is related to gs paper 3 so first of all when we talk about biosphere reserve whom do you call biosphere reserve and what the benefit do biosphere reserve gives us okay so you need to understand the basics so when we talk about biosphere reserve let's say these are designated area designated areas and here we have the interaction of various ecosystem okay biodiversity and with this concept we try to collaborate the common existence of human population and biodiversity that means sustainable existence okay so that is the point and with these type of protected area we try to conserve the nature and we know that with the human activities increasing exploitation and increasing such protected area become important for the conservation of biodiversity for the conservation of the nature okay and uh, that's the important point so that is the core objective and who designates uh, like a biosphere reserve actually these are designated by unesco united nation 
इकोनॉमिक यूनाइटेड नेशन एजुकेशनल साइंटिफिक एंड कल्चरल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ओके यूनेस्को एंड दिज आर अस्पेशलाइज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ यूनाइटेड नेशन ओके सो दैट इज द पॉइंट एंड एट वर्ल्ड ओवर वी हैव मोर देन सेवन हंड्रेड बायोस्फेयर रिजर्व एंड इंडिया एज वेल टेल मी वट इज द नंबर ओके विच हैज बीन रिकोगनाइज एज यूनेस्को बायोस्फेयर रिजर्व ओके सो दैट इज द पॉइंट सो वी हैव लिटिल बिट डिस्कस्ड अबाउट बायोस्फेयर रिजर्व the significance but in the coming times the relevance of these protected areas are going to increase okay because they can also protect from the damages that may cause from the climate change okay so that is the point and when we talk about some other issues you know that in the urban cities life become too fast okay and there is like uh, not available peace okay and we always runs forward for money for enjoyment and all of that but when you uh, come into the nap of nature okay so you may find peace you may find uh, like uh, calmness okay so that's why people from urban cities they try to travel to the scenic beauty okay scenic location for tourism and because of that one important thing they carry what they carry the pollution the plastic pollution because when they travel along with that they carry the plastics in terms of water bottle in terms of lunch in terms of the packets of chips and other things okay so that is one important thing and you can understand that with 80% of all tourism taking place in coastal area and that means the crisis the plastic pollution can bring in these coastal cities and in these coastal areas okay and the damages it can brought to the biodiversity also number 3 that is today we celebrate today as world biosphere day to create awareness about the biosphere about its significance okay so that is important thing and when we talk about the basics of biosphere reserve first of all we need to look at look up at the structure so this is a region let's say this is total biosphere reserve but it has like divisions like first of all the most protected and preserved area is called as core area okay and in the core area basically the biodiversity whether it is flora whether it is fauna they are monitored they are protected they are taken care of okay and this region has given that most protection okay and uh, beyond the core area we have the buffer zone and in the buffer zone there is the restricted activities that can be done here like uh, uh, we can tourism human settlement research purpose okay all of these can be conducted in the buffer zone so little bit let little bit less protection uh, with respect to the core area and here the, the most important thing about the buffer zone is the simultaneous existence of man and the biodiversity okay that is the important thing and uh, beyond the buffer zone we have the transition zone okay and in the transition zone uh, we have the activities allowed like uh, uh, human settlement as well agriculture we can do here okay so these are the things and that is the transition zone you can look here okay so these are the outermost zone where communities practice socio culturally and ecologically sustainable human activities like the agriculture okay animal husbandry and all of that and these all promote the conservation of biodiversity sustainable development and research okay tell me when people try to do research in this area they can find numerous uh, relations between the uh, like environment and the uh, fauna okay so that gives insight that gives how the organism survive the leaves their emotions and all of that and today we 
have a numerous research on that and we utilize in the conservation in the protection in the communication and all of that okay and uh, these are living testament to the resilience of nature this region also reflects the resilience of the nature and when we talk about resilience that means the world let's say face crisis this region will be last to get affected okay because this region has numerous richness in terms of biodiversity in terms of flora and fauna okay and if there is a biodiversity that means the resilience the resilience against any disaster becomes much more higher okay and these are the regions that promotes that cultivates biodiversity okay and also it provide home to countless unique and endangered plants and animals okay and sustainable the use of nature resource can be done from here and these are crucial in the fight against climate change why because these are important locations for the carbon sink and when we talk about carbon sink let's say that we have this biosphere reserve and we have the tropical rainforest okay and that means tropical rainforest the carbon the excessive carbon we are releasing because of the human activities they will be absorbed by these trees okay because trees absorb the carbon dioxide okay that means they can prevent from global warming okay so that's why the biosphere reserve becomes crucial in fight against climate change okay and there has been significant ad advancements which are going in and one important advancement is your conservation at the local level remember the conservation if done from the bottom to top it will be have great significance okay significance in terms of like uh, we have series of example okay like gulf of mannar biosphere reserve which has been also awarded unesco michel batiche award for biosphere reserve management 2023 and here the communities are taking conservation efforts by forming the self-help group self-help group are basically group of people that comes together for a common objective okay and via self-help group they are conserving the uh, like uh, biodiversity of that region and also promoting ecotourism so ecotourism are like environment friendly ecotourism that does not harm the nature that doesn't harm the environment much more that is the important point and when we take the another example where community participation is working well to protect the biodiversity okay is your community the local community at the sundarban biosphere reserve here they are protecting the mangroves and mangroves is very important uh in the tree that protects us from the natural disaster like cyclones or the sea waves or sea storms okay and uh, in the gulf of mannar biosphere reserve the local community has introduced the concept of plastic checkpoints and what do you mean by plastic checkpoints basically here the community members checks all the vehicles and tourists for the plastic waste and if they have plastic waste they collect the recycle and then they use it for the construction of roads so you can see the uh, circular uh, uh monitoring of the pollution and the plastic working okay so plastic has been generated they has been collected they has been uh, utilized for the road construction okay so that brings harmony okay so that is the point but biodiversity has its own threat on threat in terms of deforestation we are seeing because of growing urbanization the industrialization and the need of land for agriculture okay and if you have the invasive species also they are trying to uh, like uh, degrade the biosphere reserve the biodiversity because invasive species has higher chance to survive higher chance to expand and they take place the they takes place the location of the native species that means once they occupy the native region the native species may get eliminated okay and tell me about uh, examples of invasive alien species properly julius flora and uh, this was the question upsc did ask okay 
and also land use change like mining we are promoting and mining do damage the soil do damage the uh, like uh, ecosystem because deforestation will further be promoted in the area of mining okay and urbanization and growth of world population okay and uh, regarding the creation of awareness and uh, analyzing whether the biosphere reserve are performing well or not so there is what there was a meeting recently organized and the name of the meeting is the 10th south and central asian biosphere reserve network meeting which held in chennai okay and uh, it was organized by unesco in partnership with ministry of environment along with other organization like national center for sustainable coastal management okay and the theme of this meeting was reef to reef okay and reef means coral reef so when we talk about protection of biosphere reserve then biosphere reserve can also include the coral reef as well so we need to also protect the coral reef that is lie below the water and when we talk about life below the water that also is a very important location the ecosystem the habitat that helped in surviving various aquatic organism okay and here in this summit it provided a platform for exchanging knowledge for studying collaboration in the realm of sustainable environmental practices thus unesco which is a man and biosphere program okay and they enhance human environment relationship through combining natural and social science to improve livelihood on the one time the safeguard ecosystem on the other hand and promote sustainable economic development so friends we have discussed all these article in detail and i want to ask you a question regarding this topic uh, tell me panchmari biosphere reserve is located in which state okay and also the uh, sundarban biosphere reserve which we talked in this discussion located in which state okay and tell me the important species of the sundarban biosphere reserve so we have discussed all these articles hope you understood in a great detail and now we are coming to the prime solution so actually the answer of this question is dholvira and dholvira is basically a coastal region okay and uh, it was an important place in the indus valley civilization and here water harvesting system was promoted okay where water of the river was channelized in a definite direction for the agriculture purpose for the consumption purpose okay and for the drinking purpose and all of that and uh, when we talk about the history of indus valley civilization then this civilization is very much old okay and uh, about uh, 2400 bc to uh, like uh, uh, 1700 bc these civilization civilization flourished in northwest india okay northwest india meaning this region okay this region here rajasthan uh, the current pakistan the gujarat some areas of maharashtra okay so these were the region where ivc was uh, uh, like promoted and uh, they were known for various advancements okay like uh, 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 the uh, rectangular shaped uh, roadway okay and the house and water harvesting system and they were also very much fashionable because some of the fashionable items like lipstick also was found during excavation and a great granary okay mother goddess all these items were found during the excavation and uh, please do remember uh some of the important findings on these locations like kalibangan rocky gari roper and also try to understand that where kalibangan is located rocky gari is located where roper is located where this will help you to uh remember the facts okay so these are the decisions and hope you understood thank you friends we will meet again for the next discussion thank you